Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here with Switch Adapted Toys, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to adapt this Play School Ball Popper toy. Uh, it's a really easy toy to adapt. Uh, kids really in seem to enjoy this toy. There's a lot of action with the balls popping up, and it plays music, and, and all those things. So it's a really good toy to adapt, and it's really easy to do. Uh, this toy that I have here is actually a little bit old. We got it second hand. So uh, they've changed a little bit over the years, but it's all just aesthetics. So the internals should be pretty much the exact same. Um, so you should be able to follow along no problem, even if your toy looks slightly different than this one here. Uh, if you like this content, please like and subscribe. It really does help us out in a big way uh, and, and reaching our goal, our mission of making play possible for everybody. So. Uh, if you don't mind, take a second and hit like and hit subscribe. That really does uh, mean a lot to us, so thank you. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, for the first thing we need to do is just get kind of these extra pieces out of the way. Now, if this is a brand new toy for you and you're taking it out of the box, these won't even be here. But to get this top piece off, you just twist it and then lift it up. And then this piece just should kind of lift up and out of the way. You can set these aside, we won't need them. And you can set all the balls aside as well. All right, so with the extra bits out of the way, uh, first thing we want to do is make sure the toy's off. Uh, this toy does use D batteries, which are a little bit bigger than your AA, AAAs, so just want to be safe. Make sure you got it turned off. And then we're going to flip the toy on its stomach and we're going to remove all the screws that hold uh, the back plate in place. And this is just with a standard Phillips head screwdriver. There's also a screw back here, kind of in this slot. It's a little hidden. The final screw is located underneath the battery compartment. So uh, unscrew this screw here. So once you loosen this screw, the whole door will slide over and allow you to take it out. And then the last screw is behind this battery here. All right, now with all the screws removed, we can remove the back cover. Now there's gonna be wires that connect the batteries to everything inside, so uh, when you lift it up, just be careful that you're not going to yank any of the cords off. And uh, these wires are not very long, so just try to kind of prop it up uh, somewhere where the wires aren't being pulled. Uh, next thing we need to do is get into uh, this compartment here. So there's four screws that hold this down, we just need to remove those. All right, so with those four screws removed, we can remove this cover, set that aside. We can lift the button out of the way, and we can access this circuit board. All right, so here's the circuit board that we just pulled out that controls the button. Uh, you can see there's two little points on it right here. This is where we're gonna solder our headphone jack wires to. One wire will go to each. It doesn't matter which wire goes to where, but you just need one wire on each of these points. Um, what that will do is basically bypass this button and uh, the toy will operate when um, the, the external the button or the switch is pressed. Um, this is great because it maintains uh, the original functionality of the toy. Uh, but if you weren't really worried about that, what you could do is basically just snip these wires off here. I would snip them real close to the circuit board. And then I would, you could solder directly to those wires. Uh, that would bypass this entirely. Uh, the, the physical button on the toy would no longer work. Uh, it would only operate when you press the external button, the adapted button. Um, so they're both valid ways of doing things. This just, I like doing it this way. That way we don't lose any functionality of the toy. Before we do any of that though, we need to prep our headphone jack wire and I'll take you through that process now. All right, so here's our headphone jack wire. Uh, I actually picked this one up at Walmart. Uh, it's just a headphone jack splitter. Uh, they're definitely cheaper places that you can get these, but if you're just wanting something uh, that's easily accessible, you can pick them up at Walmart. I believe this was $4, uh, but from this, we'll actually have enough to make two toys. So the first thing we need to do is just kind of separate these wires and we're gonna cut this at the male end. 
we won't need that. And now we've got two headphone jacks. So you've got enough to make two toys, which is great. Um, like I said, there are definitely cheaper options than $4 a piece. Generally, we can get these kind of in bulk at like a dollar a piece. Um, but like I said, you can pick them up at any Walmart. So no problem there. All right, so here we have our headphone jack. Uh, the first thing we need to do is strip off the black casing. So go ahead and grab your wire strippers and, and remove that casing. All right, so you can see here I've got a white wire, a red wire, and a yellow wire. Now, all these headphone jack wires are going to be a little different. Uh, a lot of the ones that we get just has a white, red, and a bunch of bare copper wires. Um, basically, long story short, is we need to combine two of these to make one wire. Uh, we have a lot of people ask, like, why can't I just snip off one? Uh, well, in some cases, the toy may not work if you do that. So uh, there might be some trial and error. So uh, you want to kind of figure it all out before you solder anything to your toy. Um, but I think for most cases, what you're going to want to do is combine the yellow and red wire together and have the white wire separate. So all I'm going to do is strip off the yellow wire strip off the red wire, and I'm gonna twist these two together to form one single wire, all right? Now this is great, except we're gonna have a bunch of exposed wire here, so we need to protect that from accidentally touching something inside the toy and shorting it out. So what I'm gonna use is some heat shrink wire cover to protect that. So here's my heat shrink wire cover. I'm just gonna basically cut it to size that I need, leaving just a little bit exposed on the tip of the wire. Flip that over it, get it all the way down. And now I'm gonna use a heat gun to heat that wire cover and shrink it down. So the next thing I need to do is just remove a little bit of this white casing just on the tip. So I just use my fingernails to peel some of that off. And there we go. This headphone jacket is ready to go. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to drill a hole in our toy so that we can fish our headphone jack wire through it uh, so we can get it inside the toy. Uh, and we need to do that in a place where one, we've got enough reach to get to where we need to solder to, and we also need to make sure we're not hitting anything or gonna cause any sort of problems trying to get it all back together. So I think a really good place to do that is gonna be right here, right next to where our, our uh, original button was. We're just going to drill a hole right here through the toy so that we can fish our headphone jack wire through it. All right, so with the appropriate size drill bit, this matches with the diameter of your headphone jack wire. We're just going to drill a hole right through the toy. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a zip tie to the uh, around the headphone jack wire on the inside of the toy. Uh, what this does is basically acts like a physical barrier so that if someone were to accidentally yank on our headphone jack wire, uh, it doesn't just come completely out of the toy and disconnect everything that we just did. So cinch it down real tight and then give it a good tug, make sure it's not gonna go anywhere and you can go ahead and snip off any extra zip tie. All right, so now we're ready to make our connection. So I'm just gonna kind of get everything in place, get my wires kind of tidied up a little bit. All right, so the first thing that I like to do is I like to get a little bit of solder on the wires before I go to try to get it on the board. So all I'm gonna do is bring my solder in, kind of heat up the wire, bring my solder in. Now, I am not an electrician. I, I mean, I am not a professional at this. Uh, this kind of thing is not very difficult to do. I promise you, you can do it. Um, as long as you're careful not to burn yourself with the soldering iron, um, it's a piece of cake. So I got a little bit of solder on those. Now I'm going to solder it to the board. So it doesn't matter which wire goes to which. All I'm now gonna do is heat up my solder on my wires and get it to connect to the circuit board. Just like that. All right, so before we take the time to put everything back together, it's a good idea to test it before you do that. So uh, I've plugged in a switch and I've turned the toy on and I'm giving my button a press and we just wanna make sure that everything operates as it should. So here we go. 
Excellent, so we're good to go ahead and put everything back together. All right, so we're gonna slide their circuit board back into place, making sure that our connections are still solid there. And then we're gonna put our button back on. So there's a spring that goes inside this button and that all just goes in like that. And then this case goes back on, which kind of secures everything down. And we're gonna go ahead and screw in those four screws. Alrighty, now we can slide the two halves back together. And you take out that one battery, the short screw goes in this battery compartment. And I, I believe this other short screw goes up here in this top right corner. Alrighty, now all your rest of your long screws can go ahead and go in. All right, so last thing we can slide this yellow piece in. Turns out we didn't actually need to remove these screws on the very top. Um, but hey, you live and you learn. All right, now we can go ahead and slip that battery back in. Slip the door back on and it slides over to the left and then you can go ahead and screw in that screw. All right, so now if you're putting it together for the final time, you can put these pieces back on. Uh, this just slides around like so and clips into uh, this section here. And then this goes on top and rotates. And there you have it, all done. Let's plug in the toy, make sure that everything still works and uh, we should be good to go. All right, so I've got uh, the toy turned on. I got my button plugged in and I got a couple balls loaded up. Uh, let's just make sure that everything works before we're all done. Here we go. All right, so that's it. Really easy toy to adapt. Uh, you can totally do this, no problem. Uh, there's a lot of screws, but other than that, no major hiccups. So uh, this kind of toy is, is great to do. Uh, the Something about the, the balls popping up and kind of being sporadic, and ex there's just an excitement to it that we find a lot of our kids enjoy. Uh, and also too, like these balls, as much as we wish that they would stay in the toy, uh, they kind of bounce and go off and everywhere. So it's a great way to engage a sibling or another child or a classmate uh, to play with this child that might need this toy. So it's great in that aspect as well. So if you like this video or if you found it helpful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe. It really does help us out. Uh, we're posting new video and how-to videos all the time, uh, so you can check us out there. And you can always check out our website at www.switchtoys.org. Uh, there we've got a bunch of different resources on um, toy manuals and, and just all of everything is kind of centralized there so uh, if you've got a group or an organization that you want to uh, adapt these kind of on a bigger scale for kids in your community uh, we've got a bunch of resources there you can form what's called a switch chapter and we kind of help walk you through that process and uh, and kind of serve your community that way so uh, that's pretty much it hope everyone has a great day and um, we'll catch you next time see ya switch adapted toys Making play possible.